members of the graduating class, the staff, and the faculty of Queensborough Community College of the City University of New York, the governing bodies of the City of New York and the State of New York, all gathered to participate in these, the 42nd commencement exercises of Queensborough Community College of the City University of New York. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 42nd commencement exercises of Queensborough Community College of the City University of New York. Please remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation, which will follow immediately. Mr. Robert Anderson is our vocalist, accompanied on the piano by Alan Cashkin.
the audience will please be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Queensboro Community College of the City University of New York, Dr. Eduardo J. Martí. Thank you, Grand Marshal Engelberg. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Bonjour. Guten tag. Guten tag. Shalom. Shalom. Salam alaikum. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 42nd commencement exercise of Queensboro Community College. We dodged the rain, didn't we? It is a glorious day. And the campus looks beautiful, doesn't it? Would you join me in a round of applause thanking the buildings and grounds crews that worked so hard to make it look so good? And look at you. You look wonderful. You're so proud. You're ready to take on the next challenge. There are 1,382 different stories in this graduating class. 1,382. This is the largest graduating class ever. Vice Chancellor Govering, tell the Chancellor that we have a good retention program here. <laughs> I can't describe all of you, but I want to single out some of you as an example of what this class is all about. Among you, there are two students who came to this country less than two years ago, and today they're graduating with honors. Among you, there's an author of children's books who, when she publishes her first book, we will say, we knew her when. Among you, there are many others that have gone on to colleges, to other colleges, but among all of those, there's one person who is a Bell Seller Scholar, a person who has been accepted to NYU, and a person who was accepted to Cornell University. You wouldn't want to have to help her make a decision as to where she's going to go. But that is an example of the options that are open to all of you. Each year, CUNY names two community college students as scholar athletes. This year, Queensboro got the two, and the two of you are right here. And these are just some little examples of the 1,382 stories that are among us today. But today is a day for thoughtful recollection, a time for hope, a time for joy, a time to give thanks. Today you join the over 44,000 alums of this college, and as we mark the completion of this phase of your education, we extend our felicitations for a job well done. This is your day. Enjoy it. Savor it. I know that you will remember this day for the rest of your life. But it is also a day of reflection. You enter this tent as students. You leave this tent as graduates. You could have not gotten to this point 
in your long journey towards enlightenment without the people who love you so much, the people who believe in you even in times of adversity, your family and your friends. So will the candidates please rise and give a round of applause to your families and friends. This week I, I attended Hunter College's commencement exercises because my daughter was graduating and the Dean of the School of Education there, Dr. Hodges, defined teachers as those without whom there will be no other profession. I believe that this is the true meaning of teaching and this was the best example of that definition. So please, now, students, again, Rise, I'm trying to get you going. And thank the scholars, the disseminators of knowledge, our own Queensboro Community College faculty. Your graduation is a significant event, and for that reason, a number of important people, from elected officials to representatives of the university, came to wish you well, and it is my pleasure to introduce them. It is my great pleasure to introduce a friend of Queensboro Community College, an alumna of CUNY, the former chair of the Higher Education Committee, and somebody in whom we can always count to be here for us, the Honorable Borough President Helen Marshall. Dr. Eduardo Mon Monti, I was invited by him probably about a month after he, he became the president of this college. But from the moment that I saw him, I knew that this college was going to get even better than it was. And everything that I predicted has come true. He has been a fabulous leader of this college. Please give him a hand. Twelve hundred graduates, eighty countries. Among the graduates, the ages range is between 19 to 58 years of age. This is Queens! <laughs> Clearly, this college represents the ethnic diversity of our borough. We are the most ethnically diverse borough, not only in America, but in the world and our country is richer for it. <laughs> Dr. Marti mentioned that I was chair of the Higher Education Committee when I was in the City Council. It was during that time that I really learned about the faculty of the City University. They are committed, they're dedicated, they're brilliant, and our university was threatened there for a while and when I heard their fabulous war of words to save the university, I realized what a gem we have in the faculty of our city university. Please give them a hand. They are responsible. We graduate from one phase of life into another because life is a series of progressions. A whole new world opens up to you as you move higher in your profession. You will enrich your lives and, and certainly many others. For some of you, the struggle to gain your education has been more difficult than others. There have been roadblocks along the way, perhaps financial, perhaps raising a family, or even illness. For each and every one of you, this is an important accomplishment. We are here today to celebrate and congratulate your accomplishment. You began your career 
by choosing an excellent institution, the Queensborough Community College. You have chosen wisely. You have taken advantage of the unlimited educational opportunities offered at this great institution. All that you have experienced and absorbed in these two years will serve you well. For some, maybe it was more than two years. That's perfectly all right. Some, some of you will embark, some of you, you will embark on careers, and some of you will proceed to additional academic development. As you toss your caps in the air and walk across this stage to receive your degree, degrees, you are telling the world that you have passed through an important part of the learning process. Now, if it has been completely successful, the main lesson that has been taught to you is how much more there is to learn. An American writer of the 19th century said something very wise about this whole subject. His name was Bayard Taylor. And what he said was, learn to live and live to learn. One of the things which this graduation says is that you are now ready to get more out of life. And that's the goal of education. Many new worlds will open up to you, whatever course you choose. And as you move through this, move, move through this world, it's like climbing a mountain giving you the ability to see more and to see further. Your education has begun, you'll climb up that mountain. I know that each and every one of you will use it well as you pursue your dreams and reach the top. In your quest for happiness and success in life, don't overlook one of life's greatest rewards, the gift of giving back and helping others. You will benefit the most, believe me. I join your families, your professors, your friends in a resounding congratulations on your fabulous achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Board President Marshall. And now I am pleased to introduce the Honorable Anthony Weiner, Congressman, and he's going to bring greetings from the United States House of Representatives. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony Weiner. I represent you in Congress, and it is my honor to be among the first to congratulate the graduating class of 2003. You've made it. Congratulations. And, and this is a class that has had some very good fortune. You've had the good fortune to have the support and the love of the people sitting um, very often in hot sun today on the side and in the back your brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, parents and grandparents, you are very lucky to have them make such sacrifices. You're also, of course, very lucky to have the people who are sitting here in the front, the finest faculty at any community college on the face of the earth, some of the most brilliant people you will ever meet in your life, you have met over these last couple of years. And I just hope that when you are accepting your Nobel Prize or your Academy Award, then you remember to thank them when you get up there. <laughs> and you're, of course, very lucky because God has shed her grace on you at this beautiful day when they were predicting rain. <laughs> but if we were going to be honest with one another, we'd have to say a lot of this has nothing to do with luck. This was a lot of hard work. There are some people in this graduating class, many of them, in fact, who came from distant shores to make their lives better here in the United States of America, and they're graduating today. There are people in this audience who have held jobs, sometimes two, sometimes three jobs, to be able to afford to go to college and raise their families at the same time. And let us hope when your grandchildren are sitting in these seats and graduating, we have returned to the day when there is truly open admission at the City University and everyone could afford to attend these classes. So as I say congratulations to you, I want to tell you as a New York kid who grew up and, well, still growing up, but you're going to find there may be some times in your future that you're going to have someone who graduated from Harvard or Yale, not that there's anything wrong with that, Perhaps they may want to look down their nose at you. Well, as of today, 
You can stand up tall with your shoulders back and look straight them in the eye and say, I went to one of the finest community colleges in the entire country. And more importantly, I was educated in Queens, New York, in the United States of America. And ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class of 2003, you take a back seat to no one. God bless you. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the man who has been always there for us, and I mean always there. A lot of the equipment that you have, a lot of the materials that you use are because of the effort of our own councilman, David Weprin. David. Thank you, Dr. Marti. Um, one of the other things that I'm proud of having done in the uh, City Council, representing uh, you, uh, the only college in my, in my district, actually, in, this, in the City Council, was um, being instrumental, along with the uh, help of the Borough President, to get the uh, Q27 bus stop here on campus. And, and I want you to know it wasn't easy but finally, finally, MTA got something right. <laughs> Distinguished faculty, parents, friends, spouses, children, and members of the graduating class of 2003, I am truly delighted and honored to join with you this morning to celebrate this wonderful achievement. It is an exemplary accomplishment for this graduating class that did not come easily. You studied, you gave up time from work and family, you provided the tuition, and you have succeeded. You are now graduates. You can spend the next few days sitting back and relishing this feeling of accomplishment, but only for the next few days. Your hard-earned diplomas are passports to move on to the next level of achievement. Some of you plan to attend other schools. Others will undertake a new career or others will just simply continue the career that they're already on. Whatever you do, do it with the same dedication and vitality that you use to succeed right here at Queensboro. What you have learned these past years at Queensboro is a wealth of knowledge, but more importantly, you have learned how to learn, and that will provide you with the power to understand and achieve. It is my sincere hope that the enthusiasm, exhilaration, and success you feel today be part of all you do in the future. Thank you and God bless. Uh, I bring apologies from Councilman Lou, who was here earlier today. Uh, and I need to tell you that uh, Board President Marshall and uh, Councilman Weprin, they all are going to a very important hearing regarding the MTA and bus service in Queens. So they are going to be, have to be excused in order to be able to do the job of representing us at that point. So you can stay as long as you want. We would like to have you forever, but uh, uh, if you need to go, this is fine. And of course, Councilman Lou was chairing that committee, so he had to be there. Now, let me introduce to you an individual who, from the very beginning, as my boss, uh, has been there helping me, guiding me, telling me what to do, uh, sending me emails in his uh, uh, Blackberry uh, his telephone, uh, and um, a good friend of the college, Trustee Wellington Chen. Thank you, uh, President Marti. Thank you for those uh, kind remarks. Um, distinguished uh, guests, uh, family, parents, uh, and most of you, uh, the, uh, the distinguished faculty, and most importantly, the, uh, the graduating class of 2003. You know, you are our pride and joy. I, I can I, I say that with a, 
with the deepest uh, respect and, and uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, on behalf, okay. Just to echo what uh, President Marti was saying earlier, I'd like to bring, with your indulgence, a personal story. It's 1,383 1, uh, on my story. This is a story that I have not shared. Um, most of you probably do not know this story. Um, this is actually the second part of my sequel to the commencement speech yesterday at Queen's College. I was mentioning about what this lady so eloquently said at the invocation about God made you to make a difference. And I'm here to give a per personal testimonial because I was mentioning the name James Goodwin. Uh, and let me just honor them with the three names that were killed. Uh, Andrew Goodman, age 21, class of 64 from Queens College. Michael Schwerner, James Cheney, one is 24, one is 21. They were the three civil rights workers that went down to Philadelphia, Mississippi in 1964 and were murdered. Their bodies were, were, were found several days later and their car was burned. Why am I mentioning that? Because a few weeks ago I was in Memphis and I pay a pilgrimage to the National Civil Rights Museum. And, and as you've, if you're ever in Memphis, you should go because the National Civil Rights Museum now is located there at the Lorraine Motel, where Dr. King was shot. Uh, it was a very moving experience. I must say I wasn't alone because there was not a dry eye in that tour group because the person that conducted the tour was Dr. Reverend Billy Kyle. He was the last person to see Dr. King alive. He was standing to the right of Dr. King. He took a few steps away and the shot rang out. Why am I telling you this? Because I want to honor the free civil rights workers because their work did not die in vain. They made a tremendous difference. It's a delight now to go back to Memphis and see two African-American mayors and a 30-year-old congressman that's also African-American. But more importantly, the city is now more integrated because grandfather, white, grandfathers that have not been downtown Memphis because after the riot of the, the assassination of Dr. King came back to downtown. The city now is more integrated. And, and Dr. King was following another great man that does a model of my life, which is Mohammed Gandhi. Mohammed Gandhi spent 20 years in South Africa. <laughs> trying to fight for injustice that was level against the Indian community in South Africa. And as a personal observation, I was in South Africa in 1965, and I got to to the old South Africa. And, but I'm seeing positive changes. I'm not here to dwell back on the negative and on the past, because they made a tremendous difference. And Mahatma Gandhi then went back, won the concession from the white South Africans, and went back to India and won the independence from the British. And unfortunately, he was also assassinated. Why am I telling you this? Because my grandfather, who's a school principal, who also spoke out against social injustice, against a warlord, and was also assassinated. The warlord sent two, two assassins in a narrow alley, one in the front, one in the back, and pumped seven bullets into him. The part that's moving for me was that 30 years later, my mother almost became an orphan because of the result of that tragedy. Opened a newspaper, and there was a teacher and a student writing about a fabulous teacher that he has a kid. And guess who it was? It was my grandfather. And my mother never forgot that experience. And I want to share that experience with you for the simple reason to let you know that you can make a tremendous difference. There is truth in this world, there is justice in this world, and people will remember you by it. And that's why I'm honoring these free civil rights workers, because it's hardening to see the changes. Bill Moyer said correctly late, late, recently about, you know, America is not there yet, but we have made tremendous progress. To be an American is actually an ideal. It's about a process. It's about democracy, it's about tolerating differences. 
and we have to respect those differences. And so, to echo all the distinguished speakers before me, the statistic is shocking because we have now, of the 188 nations registered in New York City public schools, out of the 199 that participated in the Sydney Olympics, we have the first time in our history a second chance at the Tower of Babel where we can share all of this diversity and show them there's a new world order that is not through gun and, and power, that there's another way where we can make each other share our common bonds and, and, and understand our, our, our common roots. Because if you go to PBS website, you will see a free part series about races. And what's the, the number one conclusion? It is about that we are far more alike than we are different. And I want to encourage you. to share in that diversity, but it's also work behind to leave behind a legacy because I truly believe every single one of you is capable of doing great things. And it's attested to by the Nobel laureate, it's attested to the uh, Olympians that represent this country in many, many different Ob Olympics, in Mexico City, in Helsinki, in Rome. You will make us proud. Just leave behind a legacy and make this world a better place. And I thank you. I know that you know that you are part of a la one, the largest urban university in the country, the university that holds the largest number of Nobel Prize winners among the faculty, its faculty, the best university in the United States, CUNY. And with us, we have the chief operating officer of the university, our good friend, Alan Dobrin. Thank you. I'm delighted to join you for what is always one of the greatest days of the year, Queensboro Community College's graduation. I want to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Patricia Vansky, the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Queensboro. My colleague, Welton Chen, who all of us are very moved by his remarks. And I just want to express my appreciation again for you know, one of the absolute greatest presidents that we have in the entire CUNY system, Dr. Eduardo Martí. <laughs> but most of all, I want to welcome the Queensborough Community Graduating Class of 2003. I know that you've put in years of hard work and sacrifice, all of which required balancing demands of school, work, and family. Now that your day has come at last, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> to the friends, family members of the graduating class, I commend each and every one of you. You've done much to make this day possible for a daughter, a husband, a best friend, eating dinner by yourself, picking up the kids from daycare, spending many beautiful Saturday afternoons watching somebody else study. But your self-sacrifice has helped produce these graduates at Queensboro Community College, and I know they join me in thanking you. Today's graduates have also benefited from the contributions of an absolutely stellar staff here at Queensboro Community College. Their expertise and encouragement have played a major role in bringing you to this launching pad. Now as you take off, they cheer you on with great pride in their hearts. How about showing them how you feel? Robert Frost, wants to find a good education as the ability to listen to anything without losing your temper. 
rather than put the class of 2003 to that test, I will be very brief. <laughs> These are times of extraordinary challenges for all New Yorkers. The one thing, among the many things all of you have in common, you were students here on September 11, 2001. And that, you know, gives us all a shared common experience, which no one else in the world can really understand. And something that will always become part of you and everyone always remember that you were here during that period. So now more than ever, it's important for us to stop, look around, and marvel at the power of the human spirit, which gives rise to the rebirth and renewal we see at work all around us. The changes and improvements I see in this campus and in your lives are powerful symbols of that rebirth, one that mirrors the new beginning each and every one of you is about to experience. You leave here empowered by a first-rate education and a degree that is respected around the globe. Your professors have helped you develop not a fixed set of answers, but the ability to make intelligent decisions in a world where the one constant is change. It is in that spirit I offer you, Queensborough Community College's Class of 2003, my heartiest congratulations. On behalf of the Chancellor and the entire City University of New York, I wish you years filled with the exhilaration of renewal, the satisfaction of the challenges met, and a hope for a very bright future. And I'm honored to be here among you today. Thank you. So now you have heard from your important guests. I know that those of you who are sitting in the hot sun and under the tent are beginning to think about, well, when are we going to have the graduation? But we have to wait a little longer. You see, the way that do, we do this is we have a pace. We have the important people from outside congratulating you. We'll have now a person who represents the entire faculty, and on behalf of the faculty, she will address you. Then we'll have the award winners, and then we have the presentation of the diplomas. I'm saying this for the audience because sometimes you sit there and say, well, when is this going to end? It will end, I assure you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a person who, in my estimation, is a true leader, a true believer in the tenants of the academy, a person who has tirelessly worked on the behalf of the faculty, representing the interests of the faculty to the administration, Dr. Sheena Gillespie. On behalf of the faculty, I would like to thank all of the graduates who have touched our lives and our minds, for you are truly our partners in teaching and in learning. There's a saying in the English department on a poster, which I'd like to share with you. The mind is like a parachute. It functions only when it's open. I urge you to value your mind because it is uniquely yours. And I hope you will keep it open when you will make probably the three most important choices in your life. Choose a profession that engages your imagination in which you will use all of your many talents and through which you will make a contribution apart from learning, earning rather, a living. Try to spend your life with someone who is a friend of your mind and cherish your children. Keep your parachutes open. All of your landings will not be soft, but your journey will be more exciting. Au revoir, bon voyage. With us on the platform are many distinguished guests. I am going to introduce them and I'm asking you to hold your applause until I have 
presented all of them so that they can all be recognized at the same time. Representing the QCC Fund Board of Director and the Chairman of our fundraising campaign, Mr. Norman Bigman, and Mr. Dominic Brucolari. The President of the Queensboro Alumni Association, Mr. Emil Singer. Senior Vice President Howard Lapidus. Vice President Patricia Ivanovsky. Vice President Robert Kahn. Dean Diane Call. Associate Deans Sandra Bygrave and Karen Steele. Assistant Dean Kathy Allen. and retired Dean George Alterman, after whom a scholarship will be awarded here today. Now, thank you all for being here. It is now my pleasure to present the college awards. Will each of the recipients come forward as I call their name? The first award is the John F. Kennedy Memorial Award. It goes to a student who has demonstrated outstanding college and community leadership. Mr. Carlo Penalosa, please come forward. The Martin Luther King Jr. Award presented to a student or students who have demonstrated exceptional leadership in promoting racial harmony and appreciation of cultural diversity go to, and before I do this, I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Chen to join me in presenting this. Ms. Hoda Miraspal. and Ms. Mariana Mushevs. The Thomas R. Jennings Memorial Award goes to an outstanding graduating student in the liberal arts and sciences and the, this year's award goes to Susan Madera. Dean Alterman, would you join me? The George Alterman Award goes to the graduating students achieving the highest scholastic average in the Associates in Science degree program. And this year's award goes to David De House. The Colonel John Lacas Award is given to the graduating student achieving the highest scholastic average in an Associate in Applied Science degree, and this year's award goes to one of the Verizon students, Thomas Myers. The Joseph McMurray Award goes to the graduate student achieving the second highest scholastic average in the class of 2003. This is the second highest scholastic average in the whole class of 2003, and it goes to Rowena Rashad. And finally, the President's Award. 
sponsored by the Queensboro Community College Fund and is given to the graduating student achieving the highest scholastic average in the class of 2003. And the award goes to David the House. David is one of those students that I mentioned before who arrived in this country two years ago. <laughs> Teaching is not confined to the classroom. The nurturing of the individual student in a supportive environment is what we call student affairs. We at Queensborough have been fortunate for the last 10 years to have been led in that area by someone who has given her entire professional life of 34 years to CUNY and to Queensboro Community College. This year, she leaves us to spend more time with a young, handsome man who has shared her life. So she's going to retire at the end of this summer. And I thought it would all, was only appropriate that the commencement address to this class be given by our own Dr. Patricia Ivanovsky, Vice President of Student Affairs. Thank you very much, President Marti. Honorable Trustee Wellington Chen, Senior Vice Chancellor Alan Dobrin, distinguished guests, members of the faculty and administration, family members, and you, Queensboro candidates for the graduation class of 2003. Today, dear graduates, we honor you and we congratulate you for the challenges you've conquered, the hardships you have overcome, the goals you have reached, for your monumental accomplishment, a college degree. You have completed rigorous programs of study with faculty who are among the finest and most caring anywhere. I congratulate your parents, your families, your spouses, your children, all who have supported you. Let us applaud your faculty and your family members. We are proud of you, dear graduates. Your families are proud of you. Your professors are proud of you. You did it. You earned your college degree. Bravo. Dear graduates, you have an opportunity to help shape the world, to make the world a place where riches are shared and poverty is reduced, a world where people are free to live their lives according to their beliefs without fear, a world which treats people with decency, respect, integrity. We have gone far as a world society but it is evident that much needs to be done to make the lives of all people better. And for that, dear students, we need you. When I came to Queensboro 34 years ago, it was a very different place. The ethnic composition was primarily white, Jewish, or Italian-American. Most students were, as you are, first-generation college students. It was a time of the Vietnam War, the civil rights struggles that Trustee Chen so movingly talked about, student demonstrations, peace marches, assassinations of leaders we loved, and a time of great anguish in America. Different yet dramatic events have taken place in your lifetime. The collapse of the Soviet Union, the terrorist attacks of September 11th, the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the continued turmoil in the Middle East. 
Most of these problems are the result of religious conflict, clashes of culture, and fear of the other. History is filled with examples of antagonism toward the foreign, the other, the not like me. One of the results of education is the willingness to have tolerance, to give people who are not like us a place. Students, you are graduates, as you have heard today, of one of the most diverse colleges in the world. It is a cliche to speak of a nation of immigrants, because at Queensboro, you know immigration as a personal experience. Your fellow students, not your parents, not your grandparents, but you, our students, come from more than 130 countries. As I look out on our graduates, I know you are up to the tasks that lie ahead. Our valedictorian, Dr. I keep calling him doctor, you must be getting a doctorate. Mr. David De House came from the Netherlands in January of 2002 to study music at Queensboro as an international student. I said 2002, January. David earned his associate degree in one and a half years with a 4.0 GPA. And what he loves about Queensboro, besides our fine music program, has been the rich diversity of our students. Another result of education is the welcoming of the new, the unusual, the different. We see new and different ways of viewing the world, and we learn a new and different way of knowing when we know and when we don't know, of recognizing the difference between facts and pseudo-facts assertion for which there, are no, there is no evidence. Education is really a war against ignorance. The world will always have leaders who lie to their followers, who will manipulate society for their own ends, who will satisfy the needs of a few rather than the well-being of many. Education helps us to develop an internal lie detector a capacity to question, to demand more than an easy slogan that distorts or conceals the truth. It is typical of Queensboro that three of our students getting awards today who are sitting on this stage by pure serendipity happen to be a Christian, a Muslim, a Jew. Carlos Penalosa, our John F. Kennedy Award for Leadership, came from Venezuela served as president of the chemistry club, participated in the Queensboro Honors Program and the highly selective bio prep program at SUNY Stony Brook University. Hoda Mirisval, an Iranian-born Muslim, and Marina Mushif, an Uzbekistan-born Jew, whose parents immigrated to Israel, met at Queensboro, studied together at Queensboro, became honors students and best friends. These three honor students are academic stars, young scientist researchers who will be making presentations at professional conferences at Princeton University, Long Island University, and the National Conference of the American Chemical Society. They achieved these honors through rigorous coursework and out-of-class research with the guidance and mentoring from their professors, Dr. Paris Savronis, Dr. Sisang Karimi, and, and Mr. Pedro Uruguayan of the Chemistry Department. And it's not lost either, the Savronis, the Karimi, and the Uruguayan, that our diversity extends to our faculty. The students sit on this stage, however, not for their academic achievements, which are significant, but because they exemplify the spirit of the John F. Kennedy Award 
for leadership and the Martin Luther King Award for leadership in promoting racial harmony and the appreciation of cultural diversity. These students, like you, are a force against ignorance and intolerance. Together through the Newman Center, they, with one of their professors, Dr. Emily Tai of the History Department, created an interfaith dialogue to promote greater understanding and tolerance on our campus and beyond. Dear graduates, we need you to be our leaders, to be our elected officials, to someday sit on this stage facing other graduates who will come after you. We need you to be our teachers, our technology specialists, our protectors of the environment, our corporate leaders who believe in integrity and honesty and not power and greed. We need you, dear graduates, to be our responsible citizens. We need you to stand for principles of truth, not ignorance, of tolerance, not bigotry, of social justice and courage, not fear. Dear graduates, you share a common obligation with every person on this stage and at commencement, and that is to give back to others and to ensure that all people have the chance that you have had to have a college education. And for that, we need your support of public education. It is the duty of your generation to preserve the values of equality, liberty, and democracy. For democracy to be effective, you must be engaged, you must participate, you must make your voices be heard and your votes be counted. All of you live and will continue to live your lives in a community. We need you to care about what happens to one another, to our communities, to our children, and to our world. Keep your hearts and your minds open. I wish you love of family and friends, much joy and happiness. Take care of one another. We are counting on you, and I shall miss you. God bless you. forward and is getting closer but before we get there I want to ask our David the house to come forward and address the graduates as the highest scholastic average winner of our graduating class David I know it's very very hot outside but it's always better than rain so Bear with me. Um, first of all, before I say anything, I just want to congratulate all my fellow students, uh, graduates. I'm, uh, I'm sure that they're just as happy as me that the semester is over. And uh, so that's just here for the class of 2003. A good begin is a half work. That's a Dutch proverb, and it means a good start is half the work. And I think that exactly um, is what Queensborough Community College is about. Um, it's been exactly two years ago since I decided to move from the Netherlands uh, to the United States. It was a big step, but I knew that I wanted to live in New York City, and I knew that I wanted to study music. But I didn't know really for sure was that what I was getting myself into. But it turned out to be great. Um, as a foreign student, my admission process took a very long time, and especially after the horrific, uh, um, the horrific day of September 11th and the attacks, it was almost impossible as a foreigner to get my paperwork done. But with the excellent work of um, the Foreign Student Affairs Department, um, I was able to join uh, the college in January 2002, 
and uh, Mrs. Tunde Kashimawa, who is the director of that department, personally made an effort to get me in here. And uh, if it wasn't for her and her staff, I wouldn't be here right now. So I want to thank her very much. Now that it's a year and a half later, I can say that my experiences here have been great. Um, new QCC offered me a beautiful campus, a diverse curriculum, and very inspiring and challenging professors, um, especially in the music department. I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank a couple of people. Uh, first of all, Professor uh, Kashkin, who um, uh, guided me when I came here and uh, made the right choices for me that I wasn't able to make at the beginning, so thank you very much. Um, and then I want to mention two professors, two music professors. Um, I'm not, I don't know if they're here, but um, Professor Spencer and Professor Kudnowski, who are both my music teachers, they taught me more about music than I thought possible. So thank you very much. Um, but if you ask me what my favorite thing about this college is, and I know it's been said before, but I still want to say it, especially because I'm a foreigner also, is the immense cultural diversity. Uh, among the students here. New York City is a place where many nationalities come together and I think that Queensboro is, is the perfect reflection of this. Um, there are many representatives, I mean there are many different ethnic groups represented uh, on this uh, college and I think that's one of the strongest points of Queensboro Community College. I mean I just like walking around campus and see so many different faces and see learn about so many different cultures and um, I once was in a classroom and I counted 11 different nationalities and I mean where I, I think that's amazing because where I, where I come from in the Netherlands everybody in my classroom at high school looked exactly like me so it's for me it's, it's, it was very interesting uh, finally I just want to thank President Marti for this award I want to thank the professors I had the students I've worked with and the friends that I made and they made my time here very successful and valuable I also want to thank my girlfriend Kristen who is maybe I say this because this is without her I wouldn't have been in the United States to begin with so um, and above all I want to thank well let's hear and above Above all, I just want to thank uh, God the Creator who makes everything possible. Um, again, congratulations to you student uh, graduates. Enjoy your summer. I wish you the best of luck in the future. And remember that wherever your college career might lead you to, it began here at Queensboro. And I mean, a, I, as I said, a good begin is half the work. What a way to start the rest of your life. Thank you very much. Will the Grand Marshal please approach the podium? Recite the oath after me. We who are about to graduate from Queensboro Community College. We who are about to graduate from Queensboro Community College. Reaffirm without reserve our allegiance to the United States of America. in the tradition of the ancient Athenians, take this oath of devotion to our city. We dedicate ourselves to the ideals and sacred values of free society. We will never bring disgrace upon our community by any act of dishonesty or cowardice. We will never bring disgrace upon our community by any act of dishonesty or cowardice. Nor fail to respect our fellow citizens. Nor fail to respect our fellow citizens. We will revere and obey the laws under which we live. We will revere and obey the laws under which we live. We will do our utmost to quicken understanding, respect, and reverence for them. And we will strive unceasingly to strengthen the public sense of civic duty. And we will strive unceasingly to strengthen the public sense of civic duty. 
Thus, in all ways, we will seek to transmit this city better and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. We shall now proceed with the conferring of degrees and certificates. The candidates will be presented by the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Robert Kahn. Will the audience please refrain, refrain from applauding until degrees for each group have been conferred and certificates granted. Will candidates for the degree of Associate in Arts please rise. President Marti, these candidates have met all the requirements for their degrees. I am pleased to present them to you, and I respectfully request that you confer upon them the degree of Associate in Arts. Upon the recommendation of the Vice President and the faculty of the college, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associate in Art with all of the right privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto appertaining. Maria Aguirre. Diane Holman. Rachel Altima. <laughs> Anise Antoine. Jennifer Austin. Cynthia Bernard. Nadine Bernardin. Joycelyn Boston. <laughs> Tara Bonaventura. <laughs> Maria Bongiorno. <laughs> Alfonso Biondi. Dianarine Balgobin, Stephanie Choi, Grace Chan, Anthony Cancellarich, Joanne Cardillo. Roxana Celiorio. Charles, excuse me, Latoya Charles. Gwendolyn Coakley. Demetrios Christodoulou. Christopher Daly. Carleen Dambreville. Norca Delgado. Dana Dingillo. Maria Castillo. Marie Davis. Paula Davis. Cynthia Di Piesa. Magnolia Dominguez is this. Jakira Estevez. Lashona 
Fisher. Eloreen Griffiths. Rosa Grenard. Erin Giblin. Israel Enriquez. Carmen Hampton. Dina Hirsch. Terrell Harris. Chandra Holmes. Jamila Hurd. Lisette Isagire. OJ Jamir. Deborah Carlin. Evelyn Kerr. Raymond Kendall. Veronica Kershek. Jennifer Krishak. Stephen Lamort. Maria Lazart. Lisa LeBreton. Tina Leguia. Kang Lee. Renee Lee. Christine Labozetta. Andres Libreros. Elba Lopez.
Robinson. Inez Robinson. Marijon Rodriguez. Rolando Martinez. Miguel Rojas. Nuria Romero. Michel Rose. Dana Royal. Alexandra Bosman. Lalita Sarjuta. Sarjuta. Susan Schultz. Francesca Sinatra, Sandy St. Fleur, Jennifer Sucre, Charlene Sutherland, Willie Silla, Mary Thomas. The candidates for the degree of associate in science are assembled. President Marti, these candidates have met all the requirements for their degrees. I am pleased to present them to you, and I respectfully request that you confer upon them the degree of associate in science. Vice President and the faculty of the college, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associates in Science with all the rights, privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto appertaining. Asima Ahmad, Tabassum Ali, Juliet Alvarez, Hassan Amar, Kim Anunziato Fizarro, Shaikara Bacchus,
Sanu Barry. Dennis Boyd. Shannon Brandenburg. Brandy Bryson.
Ventira Maldonado. Britannia John. Sarita Mahogra. Hoda Mirazar. Marina Mushea. Carlos Canalosa. Rowena Prashad. Tinika Mason. Shelly Manga. Mark Mode. Loridez Montero. Ingrid Olaya. Rogelin Olivier. Tania Olmedo. Maribel Ortiz. Damian Pugh. Carlos Quintana. Zara Rafik. Richard Rizzo. Mehmet Rizvi. Mary Santil. Elizabeth Sanchez. Nosra Sandipa. Amit Sharma. Luna Schweger. Ju Shi. Vanessa Silva. Amita Sukra. Sutarshini Subhendran. Craig Taylor. Jeremy Thomas. Patrice Arturo. Anna Onegas. Darlene Vasquez.
upon the recommendation of the Vice President and the faculty of the college, and by the authority vested in me by the City University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associate in Applied Science with all the rights, privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto appertain. Robert Anderson. Elijah Adu. Franza Ahmed. Fidel Fidel Alberto. Bashiba Allen. Pablo Almeida. Angelica and Dorado. Ronald Ambrosi, <laughs> Cynthia Amirati, <laughs> William Andrade, <laughs> Marie Arti, <laughs> Rachel Asteran, <laughs> Philip Valdezari, <laughs> Andres Valdres, Arthur Valtar, Eliana Baitiengler, Lamont Banks, Natasha Ballack, Angela Bastone, Rosanna Ball, Marcel Paquedo, Rashida Begum, Edith Black, Ixby Bonilla, Barbara Booth, Darren Brun, Patrice Brown, Rocio Virgo. Kelvin Byer, William Busto, Mahin Kalas, Andrew Colwood, Denise Callender, Dino Cardenas, Eliberto Castillon, Sylvie Catalan, Jennifer Cesario, Michelle Charles, Francine Charles, Bobby Chu, John Connors, Major Bean Contractor, Tamara Korea, Barbara Crawford, Martha Presco, Simone Cumberbatch, Azim Dada, Sharika Dalu, Lynn Damiani, Kalita Danar, Hashim Dean, Ivan De Ferrari, Deborah De Moss, Nalan De Souza, Peter Danreich, Nicole Dingelo, Christina Gray, Frank Duan, Denise Espinal, Isabel Estrella, Thomas Estrella, Jimmy Arianne, 
your hand, Fabian. Rishi Kumar Duprasad. Anthony Fati. Michelle Fai. Jess Feiner. Vendelis Pereira. Donnie Fernbacher. John Fourier. Matthias Francois. Michael Gadsden. Matthew Gaglio. Mikhail Gontlet. Andre Genoa. Michele Gentile. Diane Gerowski. Marco Giraldo. Robert Gonzalez. Tamika Good. Parvati Gopal. Gordillo Yoli. Zralda Boris. Faye Griffith. Anna Bartan. Thomas Myers. Brian Gutman. Maria Hernandez, Jennifer Hensley, Yolanda Hazel, Leslie Henry Chance, Paula Harris. Kevin Howard. Nay Trump. Atik Hussein. John Isaac. Andres Jimenez. Joseph Jacquet. Luis Jimenez, Cecil Joseph, Shadan Hatan, Debbie Bogan, Sylvia Osa, Belinda Isaza, Radhika Paul. Imran Khan. Ganesh Rakhri. Marcella Landamba. Khan Hussain. Gian Louis. Sonia Leslie Monroe. Zora Hafisa by Lin Irma Little Stephen Lay 
Lauren Lane. Brenda Lowen. James Swan Reed. Elizabeth Morgan. Diane Malchuski. Luke Van Manu. Luis Martinez. Andrea Martin. Augustine Matanda. Craig Mason. Pauline McGinnis, Sonia McNeil, Roberta Medina Rosa, also receiving a certificate in application software. Devon Miller, Jennifer Morales.
Candidate Ranki Sung. Antola Rolsta.
Sacrament of Benediction to be given by Dr. Mushim al -Adin, the assistant to the Iman at the Iman al qui Islamic Center, Jamaica, Queens, and the recessional will begin right after the benediction. Members of the audience are asked to remain in their places until the recessional is completed, and all graduates, guests, and members of the faculty are invited to the reception following these ceremonies that are held in the back of the tent in the Science Building Choir. Dr. Aldini. I know I am supposed to start with the sacred, but I shall take the liberty of starting with not profane, but with the mundane. And the mundane is that, Dr. Marty, we have seen demonstration of various languages, but my language was not represented. So, and it should be familiar to those who have seen Lion King, Hakuna Matata, <laughs> which means into community, uh, Queensborough Community College this morning, a total stranger, because this is my first visit and I hope it won't be the last one. I saw a sign saying, congratulations, graduates. And I remember that about two years ago at the parochial school where I work, a resourceful student combined congratulations and graduation into a word, congratulation. So I want to use that word to all the graduates today. Congratulations. And in Swahili, Hongera. Asante. Yes, thank you. And now for the secret. In the Quran, there is a story about Prophet Solomon, also who was, who was also the king. And once, as he was walking, through the valley of ants with his army, the leader of the ants, who was a female by the way, told the rest of the ants to go back into their holes, lest the army of Solomon crush them under their feet. Hearing this, for Solomon was endowed with the language of the birds and the ants and the genies and the humankind. He smiled and then he raised his hands to his Lord and said, and I shall recite these verses in Arabic and then translate in English. Aul billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Fatabassam Allahi kam min qawliha وَقَالَ رَبِّي يَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْبَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي إِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ And Solomon smiled, laughing at her speech, and said, My Lord, arouse me to be thankful for thy favor, wherewith thou hast favored me and my parents and by the way in islamic tradition parents include teachers and in laws also and to do good that shall be pleasing unto thee and include me in the number of thy righteous slaves صدق الله العلي العظيم والسلام على من اتبع الهدى Now, please join us in the reception in the back of the building after the reception. Okay.